So you're thinking of delving into the picture settings of your Hisense H9G, but you're not sure where to start. Well, don't worry. We're here today to go through some of the more in-depth picture settings that work best for the types of content you're watching. With this, you can move away from the less intuitive presets and instead become a master at customizing your own settings. We know you guys have been waiting patiently for our 2021 TV reviews to launch, and we thank you for it. We're working hard at getting our hands on some of the newer TV models, so we do ask you to wait just a tad bit longer. This is a good time to find deals on last year's models and potentially purchase one of them as they are still relevant. Hey there, I'm Adam, a tester here at ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos, or check out our website for the full review. We use specialized software and colorimeters to try and find the most accurate picture modes out of the box so that we can recommend what we feel works best. Everything we'll be going over today are simply suggestions. We encourage you to play around with your TV settings on your own and tweak things here and there to your liking. At the end of the day, you'll be the one watching your TV, so make it your own. What we got here is an Android-based interface. The TV does a good job at explaining what each section does. Our focus, though, will be picture settings found a bit deeper in the menu cog icon on the screen. First, let's look at some of the main features the TV offers. We're going to hit the home button to bring us back to the TV's interface. And we'll start off in the top left corner. Over here, you'll see click to speak. This is going to bring up the Google Assistant for speaking. This helps for uh, mostly kind of pulling up other apps and things like that. So you can search by clicking the OK button. Open Prime Video. Now you'll see that it's thinking at the bottom. Prime Video on the high smart 4K A4 FFM. There you go. And there's Prime Video. So we'll go back and click that Home button to bring us back to our screen's interface. You can also click to type. So if you'd like, you can click onto that there and you can type like you would on any other remote and you would navigate with that uh, arrow keys here. So we'll click home. Here you can actually customize and personalize your interface. Uh, this is basically linking up to your Google account and it'll push feed some uh, personal kind of streaming services and other recommendations for, uh, for the content that you want to watch. And then we got our main apps right here. So this is running uh, the Google Play Store um, and it's running Android based uh, system here. So you can always check and see your YouTube, Google Play, Google Play Store, that's where you'll get your apps from. This TV also allows you to uh, screen share. So you can screen share multiple devices or a single device like a cell phone and beam something to your TV, any kind of content there. Um, and yeah, so we'll go back up here. Now we got our inputs. So inputs is where you're going to find the multiple devices. Today we have a Blu-ray player hooked up, we have the Xbox Series X hooked up, and we have our little Android box that's playing as like a PC. Um, and that's what you'll see here. All right, you got your connection settings. So this is for your Wi-Fi. Uh, this is where you'll adjust any of those kind of settings there to hook up to your Wi-Fi. You want to enable Wi-Fi um, if you want to be hooking up to your network. And then you can just click at the bottom here. You'll see Add New Network. Or you can scan, uh, and this way you'll be able to find your, your internet provider at your house. Then we got the settings cog here. So we got picture, sound, inputs. You got the network and internet to make sure everything's working well. You have your accounts and sign-in. So this is where you're going to sign into your account. Uh, and run all your apps through that. You have the apps here, device preferences, and those are the general settings there. We'll go into more detail uh, later on. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go to inputs and verify that everything is plugged in. So now we'll go to the cog, inputs, and we can customize these here. So we're gonna call this one auxiliary because this is our little Android box that we're using. HDMI 1 will be our game, so we'll name it game. This is simply just naming it for our sake. And then in this case here, we'll call this one the Blu-ray because this is our Blu-ray player. So that's how you can customize each one. And when you go to inputs, now you'll see that you'll have auxiliary, which is our little player, the Blu-ray, and the game console.
First thing we're going to want to do is disable the basic settings like auto picture mode or light sensor settings and eco mode. Also take note that the H9G does not support VRR or variable refresh rate. Most TVs don't offer VRR, but those that do have this feature allow for a smoother and tear-free gaming experience. Basically, it adjusts the panel's refresh rate on the fly. What we'll do now is enable game mode in the picture settings tab. This is really important because it reduces the input lag of the TV and maximizes your gaming experience. Now we're going to take a look at the settings for gaming. So we'll hit inputs here on our main screen and choose our game console that we customize here. What you're going to see here is that it's trying to connect, but because we don't have the HDMI 2.0 format setting enabled, the enhanced format, it's giving us an error message. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit the uh, menu button icon. We're going to go to picture go all the way down to the HDMI 2.0 format and hit that enhanced format to turn that on. Now what we'll do is we'll allow it to, there we go. So now we got it to work. So now we're gonna grab the remote and click that three little uh, menu button icon. We're gonna go to picture, go to picture mode. As you see, it's currently in vivid. We don't want vivid, we want game mode. So we'll select that there. As you see, the screen has changed. It got a little bit dimmer and the colors have changed as well. And that should be it for now. So now that we have the game mode activated, we want to go to the backlight cog here and we want to turn off or make sure that automatic light sensor is off. This is the thing that might be jarring when you're playing games. We don't want it to change settings while we're gaming. So if you want HDR to work from external devices like gaming consoles or Blu-ray players, just be sure to use the uh, HDMI 2.0 format for the input slot that, devices, uh, that the device is connected to. For PC gaming, there isn't a special setting to choose from on the H9G. Just make sure you're still in that game mode with HDMI 2.0 enhanced format, and all should be fine. If you're looking to game from a PC, then I'll go into more details in the monitor section. Now let's look at our recommended movie settings. For SDR on the H9G, the recommended picture mode is theater night picture mode, as this is the most accurate out of the box. It'll also allow the most customizability. We're gonna hit that home button again, go to the inputs and select our Blu-ray player. All right, now we're gonna hit that three button icon there on our remote. So we're gonna go into picture here. All the settings here, contrast, brightness, color, tint, we leave as it is. So 50 for contrast, 50 for brightness, 50 for color, tint at zero, sharpness at zero. And we'll leave it as that. We also want to adjust the local dimming feature. This is found in the backlight submenu. LED TVs use local dimming to dim the backlight of the screen that displays blacks. What this does is make blacks appear deeper and darker on those sections of the screen. This is especially useful to have when watching content with dark scenes. If you're looking to get really deep blacks in dark scenes, then you can also boost this to high. If it becomes too distracting, you can bring it down to medium and see how this fares. All right, so let's activate local dimming. We're gonna click that menu icon again on our remote, go to picture, we're gonna go to the backlight setting. Local dimming right now is off. You can set it to low, medium, or high. Our recommended setting was high, as I had mentioned. Here we have the backlight level. It's at 100 right now. If it's too much for your eyes, you can always adjust it and put it down to your liking. Also depends on the content that you're watching and uh, the environment that you're in. So we'll put this back to 100. Noise reduction and digital noise reduction we leave off, but this can help if you're watching lower quality content as it can improve the picture quality a bit. The side effect of having noise reduction on is that some of the finer details in the content you're watching can get lost. In HDR, we recommend HDR theater picture mode. HDR gets automatically enabled for native apps. This happens as soon as you start playing HDR content. You'll see a small HDR icon pop up in the picture settings menu. You'll also notice that in HDR, some of the settings will change automatically. We suggest leaving those settings as they are. This TV also supports HDR10+, which is currently playable on specific 4K UHD Blu-rays and on some Amazon Prime content. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to select the HDR theater picture mode. We're gonna push that menu icon again on the remote, picture, picture mode, HDR theater. There we go. Contrast is at 50, brightness is at 50, colors at 45, sharpness is seven. These are the recommended settings that we leave 
Uh, it's done automatically, but if you feel as though you want to change some of these, you're free to do so. Again, if the colors seem to be bland in this setting, you can always go and increase the color temp to medium or high, depending on what you like best. You can also set advanced contrast enhancer to medium for extra pop in that color. Now I'll show you where to set the color temp. You're going to hit that menu button again on the remote, go to picture, all the way to advanced settings once more, color temperature. We recommend low because it's the most accurate for color accuracy. You can put it to high if you'd like. It'll give you that pop in color that a lot of people do tend to uh, enjoy. But uh, whichever one you decide to go with is completely up to you. Make it your own. So if you notice that your HDR content seems to be a bit dim for your liking, you can change the active contrast to medium. So we'll go here, picture. We're going to go to advanced settings, active contrast. We have it on off. That's for our purposes here in the office. You can set this to high, medium, low, whatever works best for you. Another cool thing about the H9G is that it supports Dolby Vision from native apps and most external devices. Settings will once again change automatically when viewing Dolby Vision content, so you can just leave those as they are. Your SDR settings will not be carried over when viewing Dolby Vision content. For those who may not know, Dolby Vision is a HDR format developed by Dolby Labs. It's their own rendition of dynamic HDR content. We have a Learn article right here if you'd like to learn more about it. So now we're going to verify by clicking the Settings button go to picture, and it's automatically changed to Dolby Vision. We recommend Dolby Vision Bright, but if you find that it's too bright, you can also choose Dolby Vision Dark. This is completely up to you. Lastly, let's touch on the motion settings. Most of our tests are conducted with the motion settings like motion interpolation disabled. Now if we want to enable motion enhancement, we're going to click the settings button, go to picture mode, go to advanced settings, motion enhancement, we suggest film. If you want to have that soap opera effect or if you want to customize it yourself, you can go here and play with the judder reduction and the blur reduction sliders. Judder reduction interpolates lower frame rate content up to 60 frames per second, while blur reduction interpolates content up to 120 hertz refresh rate of the panel. As a result, using both of these sliders results in a smoother image, but also more visible artifacts. Use only the judder reduction slider if you want to apply motion interpolation to low frame rate content like movies. Adjust these to your liking. Some people will like to turn them up to the max for the smoothest image, but if you find artifacts to be distracting, then go ahead and reduce these sliders or turn motion interpolation off completely. If you want to know more about motion interpolation, check out this video right here. Alright, so now if you want to watch sports, we're going to hit that menu button again, go to picture, and choose our recommended theater night mode. What we're looking for here is to have the colors and white balance to be as accurate as possible. You ever have that problem where you're watching a sport and you end up losing track of the ball or the puck because the screen becomes a little bit fuzzy or blurry? Well, don't worry, this is probably not due to your eyesight. We can mitigate this by enabling BFI, or black frame insertion. What this does is lower the backlight flicker frequency to 60 Hz by adding black frames in between each frame. This model specifically may have an issue though, which may cause image duplication, so be aware of that. So now we're going to want to enable the motion clearness. Activate settings, picture, we're going to go back to advanced settings, motion clearness. Let's put that on on. As you see, the screen already gets a lot darker and with my eyes here, I can see some, quite a bit of flickering going on. The motion interpolation feature in the motion enhancement menu behaves the same way as mentioned before. For those who like to have smooth motion may prefer to have this feature disabled when watching sports. Settings for TV shows are going to be pretty much copy paste from the movie settings. If you're watching TV from a cable box, you can enable motion enhancement film option as an add-on. This helps remove the judder from 60p sources. So again, if you want to activate the motion enhancement, we're going to go into settings, picture, advanced settings, motion enhancement. We suggest film once again. If you're planning on using the TV as a monitor, you'll be able to get proper 444 chroma subsampling from the H9G. This will make text look clear and smooth, so you'll be able to read comfortably. You'll want to activate game in picture mode and enable the HDMI 2.0 format. 
So the Hisense H9G does show 444 proper format when you're using it in PC mode. Again, you want to make sure that for proper 444 chroma subsampling, you go to picture, go to game in PC, the game is for PC mode as well, and leave it as that. The Hisense H9G is a great TV. You get some really good quality out of it, and with the theater picture mode enabled, along with the local dimming and backlight set to your liking, it only gets better. Some of these recommendations should help you get the most out of your content. We use specialized equipment during our tests, and with that, we try to help take the guessing work off your hands. Our calibration values are specific to the TV we tested, so we don't recommend that you copy the white balance calibration onto yours. Again, we want to reiterate that those are only recommendations, and we encourage you to play around with the settings. Make it your own, have fun with it, and you can always just reset the settings and try again if need be. So what do you think of these settings? Have you tried them? Let us know what you think below. We just started testing cameras, and our test bench version 0.7 is rather simplistic. You can vote for the next camera we review by clicking the link here. You can also click the launch article in the description below to see what we've been cooking up for cameras. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.